I, I don't know why we still feel this need to talk about TV ratings when it comes to wrestling. It's one of these unique type of phenomenon that you don't see with a lot of other shows or forms of entertainment. Certainly not to this level. And we all know what this ties back to. This goes back to the Attitude Era of WWF. The Monday Night Wars period. Nitro versus Raw. Raw versus Nitro. Thunder versus SmackDown. SmackDown versus Thunder. Blah, 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 blah was used as a justification for what a company did or didn't do. It was used as a measuring stick, a comparison point. So I get it. It became a part of the wrestling fan culture, and it remains to this day. Whether or not it should always be that way, probably not. You know, but it is. It just is. And that's not going to change, so we might as well not gripe about it too much. Um, but as far as AEW goes... Like, we're coming up now. Technically, the time frame has elapsed. Because wasn't it October 2nd, 2019 was the first ever episode of Dynamite? So we're two years in. I know you could point to the company started a little bit before that with pay-per-view, but I, I'm really counting day one of TV, October 2nd, 2019. They made it to two years. And they made it on a relatively big scale, especially when you talk about professional wrestling. That's pretty cool. Very cool. It's awesome for fans, have more choice, more variety, more options, and equally, if, well, honestly more so since they make their living at it, for the guys and gals in professional wrestling. Like, this has been a good thing. Let's be absolutely clear about this. Even if AEW does not speak to you, even if you think AEW's product is the drizzling shits, its mere existence is good. The level of success, which it is hard to say that they haven't had success, two years later, they're still on TV, they're on primetime TV, two hours a week, every Wednesday night, and they've now got a third hour on Friday nights. Their pay-per-view business for using an older pay-per-view model, the more traditional pay-per-view model, those results have not been bad at all. They've been pretty solid, so there are certainly some success stories here. That's a good thing. But I think when we look at the ratings, like, what do we really make of them? Are they really that bad? Or are they really that good? Because I see a lot of hyperbole, over-exaggeration, and just flat-out bullshit <laughs> when it comes to thinking about the ratings of AEW, specific with Dynamite and also Rampage. Um... You know, now you've got the Meltzers and the Alvarezes of the world, especially Meltzer Magoo, like he's uh, Tony Khan stand number one, so Kenny Omega stand number one. So, of course, he is always going to present that viewership data as much as he possibly can in a way that um, is beneficial to AEW and makes AEW look as good as it possibly can. It's his job as the official, unofficial hype man of AEW. He's going to do that. So you have to understand... Um, that there's going to be bias at play. But there's also no question that the fact that two years later, this company still exists, two years later, they've been able to get additional primetime cable television time. The fact that they're able to do live events and draw 10,000, 20,000 people, like in the case of Arthur Ashe Stadium, 20 plus thousand people. You say, well, what about ticket prices or this or that? The reality is, it's not like it was WCW and they were just letting everybody walk in on spring break. Like, people still paid something. So, it's good. So, to sit there and say that, for those that say that these ratings suck, look, I'm the first one to say, like, the whole excuse about cord cutting and blah, 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 blah. Like, that shit only goes but so far. Like, yeah, it only goes so far. That's not always the best excuse you can use. I agree that these ratings are not earth-shattering and they need to be stopped being presented as such. And we need to stop talking about them like this is some indication of a wrestling boom or a resurgence in professional wrestling. Because it's not that. It's not that. Not one bit. Of that I am totally aligned with. But the ratings are not total shit, either. The vast majority of networks, shows, etc. would kill 
to have the overall viewership and that key demo, 18 to 49 year olds, those numbers that AEW gets with Dynamite and even lesser degree with Rampage every single week. Like most cable networks would kill for that. Most cable shows would kill for that. So it's not total shit. It just isn't. So we got to stop talking like that. We have to have rational, reasonable conversations. But we also need to sit there and stop pretending like these ratings are the greatest thing of all time. Because you have these folks that are pointing to the signings of CM Punk and Daniel Bryan and Adam Cole and so forth and talking about all this momentum that AEW has built. And the reality is it can feel that way. The reality is you can see them doing things. But if you're really looking two years ago to now in terms of viewership compared to that October 2nd, 2019 debut episode of Dynamite, they're still at a deficit in terms of audience. And look, you could say, well, that's because of this and that. That's, that's the debut show, so of course it was going to be higher. Yeah, they were also going head up against NXT, which didn't they do like 900,000 plus viewers that week? So on a Wednesday night two years ago, there were 2.3 plus million people watching professional wrestling. Demos my ass. We can get to the demo stuff in a second. Just talking about total viewership because that does matter. The total viewership does matter because it is a reflection of your scope. It is a reflection of your impact. It is a reflection of your ripple effect. It is a reflection of just how widely your message, your product, your brand is getting out there. They have not come close to getting to a 2.3 million number. They haven't even gotten to the 1.4 million number from the debut episode on a consistent basis. They have not. Right now, you're seeing the dynamite rating, your know, viewership numbers around 1.15, 1.2 million. Again, want to be clear, solid number. Also want to be clear, this does not mean they're beating a Raw every week, let alone a SmackDown, which is an entirely different thing anyways. It's kind of an unfair comparison because they reach millions of more homes because Fox is broadcast TV. TNT, while a cable network that is popular with a huge scope of reach, does not reach the number of households that Fox as a broadcast network does here in the U.S. But... These numbers cannot be that inspiring. They're good, but we need to stop pumping them up like they're the greatest fucking thing ever. Because if anything, all you can say over the past two years from a pure viewership rating standpoint, the only thing that's changed is the size of the payroll for AEW. That has went up sizably, significantly. And what has the real return been? Now, if you look at the last pay-per-view buys, Okay, there's an example where it may have paid off. The fact that you were able to get and support a second show, a one-hour block on 10 p.m. Eastern on Friday nights. Okay, you can point to that. But in terms of the actual viewership itself, like 600,000 viewers for Rampage is probably the new normal and might be the high standard. At 1.1 to 1.2 million viewers, Damn near like a little bit below what TNA used to get about 10, 11 years ago. Like it's good, but a lot of you thought it was going to be a whole lot more. Thought of you, a lot of you thought it was going to be a whole lot better. And the reality is it isn't. Just because you enjoy what AEW does, just because you happen to like it, doesn't mean that everybody else is. Doesn't mean that it's bringing other people along. And it doesn't make it a massive mainstream success. It's a niche kind of mainstream success, certainly. But it is not indicative of a wrestling boom. The buzz and momentum that you're thinking, you're feeling, is just a fan base that is already there, being more excited about what is already there. Sorry, the numbers back that up. And then when you look at some of the other ratings, like you know, all the focus on the 1849 demographic, that's great and all. That's what advertisers love, the networks love. Like, that's a good thing. And AEW does well there. But you know, there were people talking about, ha ha, they beat Raw in 18 to 49 for a week or two. Yeah, it is also important to point out the context of Raw is three hours. 
So that skews the numbers because that third hour always leads to a drop. Second, they're going up against Monday Night Football, the most watched show <laughs> overall and from a demographic standpoint consistently during football season. Come on. AEW ain't going against that shit on Wednesday night. Give me a break. I mean, let's be real here. Sanity check time, people. But if you look, WWE is going after the Fox News age demographic, 55 and up, or at least that's the average age of their viewer, where AEW is clearly skewing younger and clearly skewing male, which could make sense for them for the time being, but at some point in time, you have to expand your scope. When you're seeing the numbers that are indicating three quarters of their viewers are male, that's a bit too high. This company has to do better with female demographics. And right now they're not, and they're not doing the things that could draw in more female viewers. They're just not. And I don't know if they're well equipped to be able to do that in the future. So that should be a concern. And then when you so exclusively try to target that 18 to 49 demographic, you know, sometimes those fans can also age out of interest of your product a lot quicker. So what do you do in terms of fans that are older? like at the higher end of that wrestling age viewership structure. What about those that are in the lower end of the wrestling age structure? Like you could be doing good now, but what are you doing to grow your audience? What are you doing to bring younger fans in to at least if nothing else, if you're not gonna go on some type of J-shaped exponential growth curve, like have some type of steady consistent growth in your audience and your scope. You know, when I see that Dynamite's doing less than 1.2 million viewers and they're around 0 0.45, 0 0.5 for the key demo, which is all the AEW guys love to talk about, like, those are good numbers, but they should be a little disappointing. Concerning, no. Disappointing, yes. Maybe a little surprising to you the skew of male to female viewers of the show should not be surprising and should also be concerning. When you look at the numbers for Rampage, you know, you're like, man, they're throwing a lot into there and they even have a Daniel Bryan wrestling on that show one week or a CM Punk wrestling the next week and their viewership is this? Like, what's it going to be in a couple of months? Like, these are valid, legit questions. Look, uh, I'm not here to shit on the AEW parade because two years later, they still exist. Two years later, they are viable. Two years later, they are legit. Two years later, they do have some good things going for them. But I don't think those viewership and ratings numbers are nearly the indicator of success that they're made out to be. And when you look at the amount of gimmicks and bullshit that they've thrown for the past few months at this show, at this brand, in order to pop some of those ratings? Like how effective has it really been? A little bit, but was the juice worth the squeeze kind of conversation? They're good numbers. Right? And maybe I'm not doing a good enough job to emphasize they are good numbers. But they are not great numbers. And when you look at what they've thrown at their shows in recent months and look at the talent that they've acquired and the expansion of the payroll, they should, if anything, be classified as a little bit disappointing. You're not running head up against NXT anymore. Where are those fans that were watching NXT? Why can't you even draw them in? Because at least those are people that are watching wrestling or sports entertainment of some kind. And if your answer is, well, I don't really care. Well, that's fine. You don't have to care. If you say, I don't want this company to change because I'm selfish, well, then you're just a fucking idiot. If you really love the company that much and the wrestlers and the product, you would want them to grow their audience because that means the show can potentially be even better for you. And more importantly, for those guys and gals that you claim to love and support so much, it means that the company would make more money, it means the talent would make more money, and why in the fuck would you be against that? So the, the viewership numbers are good. Let's not spell them out to be a total disaster, because they're not. Uh, but we really, really need to pump the brakes on talking about how great and awesome and spectacular these numbers are. They're good. They are not that good. Do not get it twisted. 